Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host. My friend Amelia is back. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really good. We just traded spring breaks. I got mine and you're, you're mm-hmm. heading back to school now, but uh, I get to ask yep. you because you, you went home over break. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I get, how are things going at, at home? How are things going at school? What are, what are we going to talk about today? Things at home are great. School's great. Um, while I was on spring break, though, a, a definite question entered my mind. Okay. Um, and it is this question of the fourth commandment and how do we love our parents well, even when there's this idea of like, well, I have my own, like, I'm a person myself and I can make my own decisions. Um, but also our, my parents are so wise and I need to listen to them. Um, this kind of like back and forth of, well, when, when do I listen to them? When do I don't, when do I not? How, how do I love them in that way? Mm, sure. So the, the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Um, I, I would say like it, it's challenged probably twice in our young life and once in our old age. Um, in, in, our, in our young life, it, it gets really challenged the first time we realize that our parents are sinners that they're not perfect, Mm -hmm. that they don't actually know everything. And and that happens, you know, we're we're usually pretty young. Like I remember sort of when my kids started to figure out that that I also have no idea what I'm doing. And they were, you know, eight, um, six and eight, and they they sort of had their heads around it. But it's, it's also challenging when you start to turn into an adult and you want to sort of carry more weight in, in a conversation uh, that, that it should be sort of a two way street, but also the fourth commandment doesn't say on your father and mother until you're 18. Um, <laughs> and it'll, it'll get challenged again uh, in their old age uh, when you have to start to assume some of the caregiving roles. Um, it, it's genuinely a challenging thing to have somebody who, who stood over you and, and behind you and supported you all of the years of your life, who then begins to need help with very simple things in, in the midst of, of, old age that, that comes before we fall asleep. Um, and, and we can kind of do a law answer uh, and a gospel answer. Um, and the law answer is is probably the one that you don't want to hear. And that's that <laughs> the fourth commandment doesn't go away when you turn 18. It, it, it doesn't. There, there is not a time when um, you, your parents' uh, words just don't matter to you anymore, ever. Um, the, the one sort of excuse the Bible would give that we kind of hang on to is that we must obey God rather than men. So like if your parents tell you, uh, never go to church and steal cars, like they're, they're gonna be like, <laughs> you know, ma, dad, I love you. But, uh, th- those are your over two right there. Um, but <laughs> you, you kind of see what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I do. So we, we, we can disagree with our parents but in the right context where it's like we can use our judgment well is this is this something that goes directly against what i hold true in Hmm. in my faith kind of thing right but you you actually because you used a gospel word uh love um that that i think might be helpful and and the way that we express this, even that, though the, the gospel will inform how we view the law. And, and that, that makes sense anytime because the law and the gospel are not two sort of separate things. They're just sort of distinct understandings, distinct doctrines of the very same word of God. Uh, so what I mean by that is um, the law is uh, the law is like a lion. OK, um, so the, the, the lion will kill you. There, there's only one place in the whole wide world you would ever want to be near a lion. Right. Where would you ever want to be near to a lion? zoo yeah otherwise if if, like there was a lion there i would want to be farther away from the lion at least farther away than you um because i (laughs) I don't want to see the lion do more lion things but if you're at the zoo like then you you get like right up to the to the glass and you're like i sure wish that it would do more lion stuff like you would never say that it was actually right in front of you the law is like a lion It, it it will kill you um but something has to come and put it in a cage and then after it's been caged, it actually becomes beautiful. The gospel comes and puts the law in a cage. Jesus perfectly fulfills the law. And he says, the law cannot kill you anymore. I, you are dead in me and alive in me. In your baptism, you are united to my victory over death. You are united to the cross where your sins are forgiven. You are already united to the resurrection. So the law is not simply there to show you all of the reasons that you're a sinner anymore. It, it still will, and it will show you all of the reasons that you need me. But the law will also then start to actually express a, a, a light to our path, a, a lamp to our feet. The law actually tells us things will actually go go better this way. Look at the line, and it's actually kind of cool that it's, its paws are that big. It's actually kind of that that's a majestic beast. Mm-hmm. When we look at the law, um, in light of love, in light of the gospel, 
we get to see that God doesn't give the fourth commandment to frustrate you. Like he, he doesn't give you the fourth commandment to, to give you people in your life who he knows just as well as you probably better that they're sinners and <laughs> that they have no idea what they're doing, but he actually gives you your parents to, to love you and to care for you. And he would actually work through them. It, it's actually why we get to say that, that um, the fourth commandment that your parents are worthy of honor, um, not because they're always perfect, but because God promises to work through them. See, honor has to be earned. Respect does actually have to be earned. But you're called to love and respect and honor and obey your parents in the catechism. And that's because God promises to work through them. Um, when, when you're given a fourth commandment, what God says is you see these two sinners over here that you're going to disagree with on a profound level <laughs> that are going to be wrong. I will still I will still work through them. So in, in light of love, ask yourself this question. First, who is stronger, God or your parents? God. Okay. So if, if your parents are just dead set on screwing up your life, and this is actually their intention and it's not, um, but God actually wants to work through them to raise you up, to be healthy, to raise you up, to, to, to have faith. Who's going to win that tug of war? God. All right. So like, it's, it's going to be bumpy. It is because your parents are sinners, but, but God will actually accomplish through them the things that he needs to. And then we get to start to look at what that means. Because like when, when I say love, like what does love mean to you? Well, I feel like there's this common idea of love that being a feeling where like, oh, it's almost like more passion in the sense, like I feel this way. Um, but I don't think that's what love means in this sense. I think it's more the way that we act towards our neighbor in a sense. Like Jesus, for example, he had ultimate love because he died on the cross when he didn't have to and was completely selfless. So it's this selflessness. It's it's giving up yourself for another person. That's absolutely perfect. Like, hang on to that. That, that was absolutely perfect. So, so like, if we're going to hang on to this, then um, the way that you love somebody is actually going to be shaped by the Ten Commandments and also by your vocation. Um, the, the way that I love my friends is different than the way that I love my wife is different than the way that I love my kids is different than the way that I love uh, the, the people that I, I, I serve as a pastor. And even there, sometimes it changes. So like when, when you were a, a baby, your parents loved you by changing your diapers. And like, that wasn't a thing that brought them passion, but it was a thing like, we're going to do this because it's important because this is a sacrifice that we, we are willing to make for this. They don't still do that though. Right? No. Like, yeah. No. Um, no. They, now, now they love you differently and they're still your parents. They still have the authority. They still have um, the, the, the due respect and honor because God works through them. But the way that, that you guys um, interact with one another, though shaped by the fourth commandment, though shaped by vocation, uh, though shaped by love, is still gonna, it, it's going to evolve just because the ways that you would sacrifice for one another are going to be different. Um, in the very beginning, like I had to teach my kids, don't touch the stove. Um, and that was like, that was the <laughs> deep philosophical questions and answers that we had for one another is I want to touch that and no, don't touch that. Um, and now we get to talk about, now we, we talk about the faith. Now we talk about philosophy. We talk about right and wrong and, and how to, to be a grown up in this world. And it's, it's actually a lot more fun uh, because don't touch the stove gets boring after a while. But um, <laughs> the way though that, that uh, both you as a, a child would, would get to wrestle with this, you get to wrestle with it more. And I think sometimes there comes a, a bit of guilt with this because like as a child, as a little child, you never questioned those things. It just was. And now you get to look at the world and actually add to the conversation and get to, to bring to your parents new things because you love them and you actually want to hear from them about this. And you love them so much that you're willing to, to sort of hear from them, even when you think it might even be, this might be bad advice, but I still want to hear it anyway. And in the same way, your parents, uh, love you in a way that that grows um where it, it it was in the very beginning just a first a pure duty like you you can't instruct an infant you just have to <laughs> to hold her or to hold him and, and and care for him or care for her uh and then you get to just raw instruction where like don't touch the stove and then you get to actually start to teach but it, that the cool part about having kids that that get older even kids that turn into adults is that now um it, it gets to be not that I, I can't just tell you what to do, but now I get to give you advice. Now I get to reason with you and think with you. And I still get to hold that, that role. Um, but it, it does get to sort of be more of a push and a shove uh, back and forth. You, you kind of follow? Yeah, I do. There's there's this delicate, like almost balance that as you get older and older kind of like changes the scales a little bit. And, and eventually at some point, as you said before, you're going to have to take care of your parents for them. And you're going to like, almost like give them the love that they gave you when you were born right. at the end of their life, which is just kind of a cool cycle. But 
um, there's this idea of this this almost friendship idea. I think that our culture likes to have a lot. Like, why isn't my parent my friend? Why don't they just agree with everything that I want to do all the time? And I think you were getting along the lines of kind of what that looks like without it being this kind of shallow friendship. It's it's more than that. It's there's a relationship, but you also can give advice. You also have this respect and right. listening. I, I love my friends and I love my parents, but in in different ways. Um, and and for mm-hmm. different reasons. Um, I. I I, I would actually be really, really uncomfortable if my parents spoke to me the way my friends did, uh, because like I don't, <laughs> I don't need you for that. I need you for other stuff. Um, and in the same way, I actually I don't want my parents or my friends to be my parents. Like that, that's that's mm-hmm. not fun for anybody. But I honestly confront this head on because your parents have a, an authority that was given by God to them that your friends don't have. Um, so you can ask about it then, especially as you're old enough to challenge these things when you're bringing up a topic and, and you're like, "This is what I think about this," and they tell you. No, it's this. You, you get to ask, like, are you giving me advice or are you telling me to do a thing? Because, like, let them actually wrestle with it themselves as parents. Um, are, if you're giving me advice, then I want to think about it. And and we can talk about it together. And you might be right. And I just don't understand it yet. But we, we can work towards it. But if you are uh, if you're telling me to do something, that there is still a fourth commandment. There, there is still a place where I, I just sort of have to hear you and, and say, all right, I'm with you on this. And God is, has promised to work here. So even if I disagree with it, I'm going to go along with it because the fourth commandment actually matters not for when you agree with it and when your parents feel like your best friend, but actually chiefly for for when that's not the case and when there is a power imbalance. Mm-hmm. There, there's supposed to be a power imbalance. That's where God God works. Um, when when there's a power imbalance, it doesn't mean somebody is greater than or less than. It just means that that somebody is is giving and somebody is receiving. But both are are, are different sort of images of what it is to to see our faith to actually have the the lesser of the powers is to be the Christian, because God gives and we mm-hmm. receive. To to sort of say that I don't get an equal share with this. There are places where you're right, you don't, and it's better that way. You have, if you wanted an equal share before God, it would be your job to fulfill the law, or you go to hell. And right. instead, there's a, a great power imbalance, and he he bears all of the things for you, and he he tells you what to do, and when you when you don't listen, he forgives you. And that, that that that's that's better that way. Yeah, there's something like beautiful and really really good about that, and mm-hmm. it's hard to be selfless in that way instead of selfish and wanting to do everything. Right. And so it's, it's easy to talk about these things in theory, but um, to actually talk about them in practice when they matter. So like, uh, can I go to a school that's farther away than you want me to go to? Can I date when you don't want me to date? Like you get to actually ask these questions now. Um, and, and then when you're confronted with an answer, I, I, I actually think that it, it pays homage to the fourth commandment to, to ask straight out, are you giving me advice or are you telling me? Like, is this a, mm. this is what I think, and this is why I think, and let's wrestle with it together, because part of you being a parent now is actually helping me not just know not to touch the stove, but actually learn how to think. <laughs> or are you just telling me, this is a don't touch the stove moment, where you're, you're not ready to understand this yet, and, and I'm going to have to help you with this. And then when you get this, you, you put the ball back on the parent's court, and I think it, as, as sort of frustrating it is, as it is to, to wait for that to come back, most parents are not actually looking to control your life because they're, they have enough going on on their own plates. Um, they, they just want you to be healthy and safe. And if, if they can know that you are thinking about it and talking about it and, and using um, not only logic, but your faith, that, that uh, the scriptures that are given to you by God to start to navigate those questions, it's actually a really comforting thing. I don't want to be the one who's in charge of every decision my kid makes because I, I am busy enough. I want him to actually be able to, to do these things after I'm gone um, and, and still navigate this. I want him, though, to, to start with God's word and what does it say and then think about it and actually make a nuanced and informed decision. But that won't happen unless I actually give advice and let him push back against it and, and sometimes let him flat ignore my advice and then help him. <laughs> after he has failed. And, and and then that's what forgiveness looks like. And there are also going to be times where, no, I'm telling you, the, the answer to this is, no, you can't jump off the roof. I don't care if you have an umbrella. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, there's a, we have to respect the, the wisdom of our parents because they, they've been around for a lot longer than us. And that wisdom is good and it helps us to know how to live a good life ourselves and to continue along that life eventually as our parents slowly start to offer less and less um you should do this and you should do this kind of stuff 
Right. It's love in yeah. both cases, but it, it's, it does mm-hmm. different. It has different shapes depending on sort of what stage you are in the relationship. Otherwise your parents would still be changing your diapers and that would just be weird for everybody. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, does, that kind of, does that kind of answer your question? <laughs> yeah, that's really, really, that, that solidly answered my question. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's hang out again sometime, but uh, thanks for, yeah. thanks for hanging out. Thank you.